Hi guys, welcome to this vertical integration session between pharmacology and ENT. Myself, Dr. Nilesh Raj, your pharmacology faculty and with me. This is Dr. Raju Dhan, your ENT faculty. So we have brought a very interesting clinical vignette for you, which will bring out beautiful interaction between ENT and pharmacology. And let me read the question for you. A 29-year-old COVID-19 RT-PCR positive individual presents to emergency in a critical state with deranged vitals. The examination shows a blackish necrotic debris in the nasal cavity with necrosis of the skin of the external nose. What's the best treatment plan for this patient? The first choice amphotericin B, debridement. The third one liposomal amphotericin B and the fourth one is liposomal amphotericin B along with debridement. So first of all, let us take the hints given in the statement of the question. The biggest hint is something black in the nose or something black around the nose is a pretty high clue for mucormycosis. We all know that. The second clue is that there is COVID-19 positive individual and you know this is a now a known association between COVID-19 and mucormycosis. So as we see the choices, our mind gets glued to the amphotericin B versus liposomal amphotericin B and I'll request Dr. Nilesh Raj to guide us on this point that how liposomal variant is a better option than the usual amphotericin B. Sure, sir. See, my dear guys, before going into this actually liposomal forms of amphotericin B, we have to have a basic knowledge on what exactly is amphotericin B. See, we have a uh, majority of the students, when the students tend to ask, sir, what is amphotericin B? What is that B? Don't we have an amphotericin A? Yeah, we actually had an amphotericin A, but it is not being used right now. It is purely the forms of amphotericin B. Whether it's not uh, usually the name will be behind a bacillus or behind of a bacillus thing, but it's not going to be there. It's just a variant of amphotericin. Somehow. I hope you have uh, had a donut, sir. Right? Donut. Yeah. I think I like uh, donuts a lot. That donut, whenever I see, I feel like I'm seeing an amphotericin B because that's what the structure is going to look like. Mm -hmm. We used to call them as a donut-shaped duct. There's going to be a central one, central hole. Typically, a hole will be there in the center and surrounding is where the outermost wall is. In the central wall is where your hydroxyl groups will be. We have OH groups in the central one, mm -hmm. whereas we have lots of double bonds which is being dispersed of on the outermost part of this area. What's the reason why it has been designed as such is because it's an interesting one, guys. Whenever this molecule comes and gains entry near a fungal cell wall, consider here is where the fungal cell membrane is. We have the fungal cell membrane over here. This round thing, it forms a cylindrical shaped wall so that this whole thing will get, get gets incorporated on the cell membrane. Mm -hmm. Which means we have this uh, a longer one with the central hole that is your amphotericin B. We have the cell membrane of the fungus. It just goes and gets incorporated on the cell membrane. Mm -hmm. So what will happen here is where your cylindrical shape is going to be. So here is where your cylindrical shape and in the center we have the hole which is there. Mm -hmm. And that hole which is there in the center is responsible for its mechanism of action. So because of its hole, to say it's producing artificial pores, guys, simpler, right? Because of this artificial pore, what happens? There is going to be leakage of contents from inside to outside of the fungal cell membrane. There is going to be leakage of contents. Because of this leakage, the fungus dies. I'm repeating those words, sir. The fungus dies. It is not fungi static drug. It's a fungi serial agent. An important question. And because of this leakage, it is going to be producing certain adverse effects too. And the problem here is, this uh, leakage can be seen, to say this uh, properties can be seen not only with uh, your uh, fungal cell, it is also seen in your normal cells too. That's the reason why the patients might land up in infusion related reactions, the most common one. And the famous, everyone knows it and that is your nephrotoxicity, renal toxicity. They tend to produce distal renal tubular acidosis with hypokalemia and hyponegnesemia, a classical one guys. A typical name which we give for the adverse effect associated with amphotericin B. One thing I can prevent the infusion reactions by pre-medication sir, everyone mm -hmm. knows. We have to pre-medicate the patient and also we can opt for a slow infusion rate. How can the renal toxicity be prevented? Simpler sodium, just load the patient with sodium that is going to be useful for that. But we have one more method. Why should we have the burden on the doctors, right? We need uh, Rajiv sir to teach a lot of things, right? If we keep him busy, he will not be here to teach. <laughs> so that's the reason why we pharma people have come inside and made a smaller one and that is we have made a galaxy out of it. This is what a galaxy is. 
and this galaxy's name is liposomes and these galaxies are nothing but liposomes and inside these galaxies is where the planets are going to be fixed upon mm -hmm. and those planets are nothing but your amphotericity in so why are we doing this why are we incorporating these things is nothing but when this liposomal amphotericity in comes inside the fungal cells the liposomes and the amphotericity in b will be separated and the amphotericity in b will start producing its own that leakaging effects but when the same thing comes into in near a normal cell that membrane it is not going to get disrupted mm -hmm. the liposomes remain as such it will prevent the amphotericity in b from going and producing the action thereby i can decrease the chances of i can decrease the chances of renal toxicity nephrotoxicity is going to be very much lesser with this most important advantage of lymphotomal amphotomal amphotericin b just remember this renal toxicity is the only reason why we have derived a liposomal amphotericin b uh, they say the most important black mark with amphotericin b is in nephrotoxicity which we have corrected with the liposome talking about black marks sir uh, uh, black colored is it is it going to be the characteristic form of mycormycosis or is there anything else which uh, we can find it out uh, first of all thank you dr nilesh for beautiful explanation i think i you know i was not knowing much of this to be very honest with you beautiful really